Hey everybody and welcome to Leia's Lair. In today's video we will be going over the ending of the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. The six part Obi-Wan Kenobi series has just ended and what an ending it was. There was plenty of action and emotion and it had bits and pieces woven carefully to connect them to the movies. The series has a nice ending that helps add to the plot of these characters that will be 10 years older in A New Hope. Here we will explain the ending and different easter eggs that are throughout the finale. Come on! We've got a ways to go. Leia's Blaster Holster Obi-Wan gives Leia the blaster holster that was worn by Tala. It's empty. Well, I wasn't going to give you a blaster, Leia. You're ten years old. But you won't always be. This helps to explain Leia's progression into the type of leader that she will become. You said there were many ways to lead. Looks like I was right. And that may or may not involve being handy with a blaster. Skins. How Anakin Got His Head Scar In Return of the Jedi, viewers see Anakin Skywalker, Sans Helmet, for the first time in Star Wars. Upon seeing him, he has a very noticeable scar on the top of his head. During the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, Vader suffers a lightsaber to the top of the head by none other than his former master. This adds more substance to the scar when we see it in Return of the Jedi, especially knowing just exactly how he got it in the first place. I'll not leave you here. I've got to save you. You already have Luke. Why Obi-Wan tells Luke that Vader murdered his father. Obi-Wan tells Luke in A New Hope that Darth Vader murdered his father. He betrayed and murdered your father. The idea of this was actually explained during the duel in the finale of the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. During the fight, there is quite some emotional dialogue between former master and apprentice. I'm sorry. Obi-Wan is distraught feeling that he has failed Anakin. I'm sorry, Anakin. For all of it. A feeling that has stuck with him since Revenge of the Sith. I have failed you, Anakin. I have failed you. However, Darth Vader absolves him from any feelings of guilt and provides closure that he is actually the one who killed Anakin Skywalker. You didn't kill Anakin Skywalker. I did. Obi-Wan will go on to pass these words on to Luke in A New Hope. Why Obi-Wan Calls Anakin Darth In the series finale, Obi-Wan refers to Vader simply by Darth, as if it's his actual first name. Goodbye, Darth. Since this is a title that precedes every Sith, such as Darth Maul and Darth Sidious to name a few, it is meant to emphasize how far Anakin has fallen to the dark side by focusing on the Darth name. This is actually Obi-Wan throwing shade at Vader, and he does this again in the character's final battle in A New Hope. When I left you, I was but a learner. Now I am the master. Only a master of evil, Darth. Why Obi-Wan defeated Darth Vader. We get Obi-Wan vs Vader twice in this series, which is definitely not something we are upset about. The first few episodes had Obi-Wan struggling to rekindle his connection to the Force, and walk the path of the Jedi again. In their first encounter, Vader drags Obi-Wan through the mud. Literally. Things in the finale start off slightly better for Obi-Wan, but he still struggles against Vader and he finds himself on the receiving end of the high ground and this crushes him in more ways than one. However, Kenobi's thoughts of Leia and Luke give him the strength to reconnect fully with the Force and break free from under the rubble. He is then able to catch up and give Vader a run for his money and at one point even lifts the ground to make it higher, which is Vader's ultimate weakness. This showcases the power of Obi-Wan's reconnection to the Force, and why he was ultimately able to defeat Vader. Darth Sidious explains why Vader never finds Kenobi. Following his defeat to Obi-Wan, Vader is stricken with anger to get revenge on his former master. He returns to Fortress Vader on Mustafar and vents to his current master. You seem agitated. My friend. Palpatine senses that Vader's feelings towards Obi-Wan are creating weakness within him, and questions whether he can overcome his past and keep focused on building the Empire. Perhaps your feelings for your old master have left you weakened. Vader, realizing that he cannot pursue Obi-Wan based on his master, agrees to try and forget his past, which explains why Vader never continues looking for Obi-Wan throughout the following 10 years. I serve only you, my master. Leia's message. 
The ending of Obi-Wan Kenobi has him saying goodbye to young Princess Leia after all their adventures together. It is a nice way to close up their story together, and it sets up the story for the beginning of A New Hope. He tells her to contact him if she ever needs help again, but that no one must know they know each other. If you ever need help from a tired old man, but we must be careful. No one must know, or it could endanger us both. Therefore, as a precaution, in the message she must act like she doesn't know him, and only knows of him through her father and his time in the Clone Wars. General Kenobi, years ago you served my father in the Clone Wars. This helps explain why she just doesn't say in the message that she knows him, keeping their connection to each other hidden in case it is intercepted. Reva's ending. Reva has an interesting storyline, and we honestly thought it would end in her ultimate demise. However, she cannot bring herself to get her revenge on Anakin by killing Luke, as she sees a reflection of herself. Obi-Wan encourages her to realize that she is honoring her friends that were cut down by Anakin in Order 66 by showing mercy and helping them find peace. You have honored them. Reva's character always has been over the top in terms of trying very hard to get to Obi-Wan, and at first we think it is to rise higher, but it is actually due to her wanting revenge on Anakin. She is able to find peace and let go of her anger by her own mercy and through the help of Obi-Wan. What is next for Reva is unclear, although we can be sure that it will be likely away from the gaze of the Empire. Perhaps she will go on to join the Rebellion, or even reignite her path as a Jedi. Now you are free. We both are. But then again, we hear there is a vacant spot that has just become available in the meat factory. Something you want to say? Qui-Gon Jinn's Force Ghost. At the end of Revenge of the Sith, Yoda gives Obi-Wan a mission to learn how to communicate with Qui-Gon. In your solitude on Tatooine, training I have for you. This is something that, even after 10 years, he has failed to do, as shown multiple times throughout the series of him trying to talk to his master. Master Qui-Gon. Master. Master, are you there, Master? I have to face him, Master. From the start of the series when he was a meat factory worker and after all he has been through in the series, he finally reconnects fully to the Force and resumes on his path as a Jedi. Hello there. Upon doing so, he is finally allowed to communicate with Qui-Gon. Master Qui-Gon. Well, took you long enough. Who reveals that he had always been there and rather Obi-Wan needed to reconcile with his past beginning to think you'd never come. I was always here, Obi-Wan. You just were not ready to see. What happens next for Obi-Wan? Obi-Wan, now back on Tatooine, is ready to resume his protection of Luke until the time of the events of A New Hope. During that time, Star Wars canon has him dealing with Tusken Raiders, Jabba the Hutt, Black Chrysanthemum, and even his longtime nemesis Darth Maul. It is thought that Obi-Wan will continue to communicate with Qui-Gon Jinn, discovering more about the Force, and continuing his newfound outlook on life. And there you have it. Thanks for watching everyone. What did you think of the ending of the Obi-Wan Kenobi series? Let us know down below in the comment section. And remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more great videos to come. We hope to see you all again in Leia's Lair. You are not a Jedi yet. Oh.